All you need to know is it's three simple ingredients. You need water, you need the Knox gelatin, and then you're going to also need to order a vegetable glycerin. And this is the standard 32 ounce bottle, which will give you about four cups. Um, you only really need two cups of vegetable glycerin. Okay, so to start, um, you're gonna need some sort of mixing bowl. So you can use a traditional pot. Sometimes at home I have a large Pyrex bowl and that will work too. Um, you're going to put your glycerin, and this is two cups, and it's just room temperature. You don't need to do anything. You want to mix your glycerin with your jelly, and silicone spatulas are extremely helpful. Okay. And then you slowly just want to empty your packet. dissolve it and try and get all the lumps out. It kind of looks like a roux, like a gravy. Okay, so once you get that all dissolved, it only takes like a minute. And again, this is room temperature at this point. So then you want to get your hot water and it's just plain hot water. And this is again, this is two cups of hot water liquid. You're going to add this to your jelly glycerin mixture and it's always recommended when you're making this to kind of go slow because you're trying to not too many air bubbles you are going to get air bubbles but you don't want to get too many of them in your plate so just kind of go slow and take your time Okay, so once this is dissolved enough, you just slowly want to pour it in. And again, you want to make sure that your pan is completely clean. You don't need to grease it. You don't need to do anything. It's recommended that you use something that's sort of a non-stick surface. Just make sure that um, anything on the bottom, there's no writing really on the bottom of your pan. It has to sort of be completely flat. Um, and if you don't have a flat table surface to work on, you can also put some sort of a um, a slide under there to level your surface when your jelly pan is hardening. And then I use my silicone scraper also. These are so handy if you have one. If you have some air bubbles on top of your jelly plate while you're making it, um, you can just move your silicone, your spatula, and move them off to the side and pop your air bubbles off to the side like that because you want a pretty smooth surface. If you don't have silicone, you can use a um, piece of paper, any kind of piece of paper, and you just want to use the paper to grab the air bubbles and pull them off to the side. And that should take away anything, like if you have little hairs in there, um, you know, and you just kind of want a real smooth surface. And then the trick is, you know, if you look online, there's some people who make jelly plates and they stick them in the fridge. You can totally do that. But right now I know a shelter in place, people's fridges are really full. So I don't have the space for that in my fridge. So I started experimenting with actually just leaving them out on the table surface overnight. And that was completely fine. I like to leave my plates to cure at least overnight just to give them more time. Um, it's also gonna depend on your climate. If you're in a really hot area, you know, it might take a little bit longer for it to form. Um, you can always pop them in the fridge for a little bit if you wanna work on a cold jelly plate before we get started or before you're ready to start printing. Okay, so I made this circular plate, right? But say this didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, Already there's a cut in it, so just tear it up. <laughs> it's really that simple. And I have found, to be honest, that if you remelt a jelly plate, you're gonna get a stronger plate. So this is what I do. I just take the same pot or a different pot or a Pyrex if you have a microwave at home. You can put 
these pieces. They're so fun and so weird. Just put it in the pot and remelt it. It's that easy. You can't mess this up. So if you're not happy with your first plate, say you have too many air bubbles. Um, you know, you don't like the way it turned out. It came out uneven because your surface is not even. Tear it up, put this on the stove, take your wooden spoon and just melt it. It'll take like five minutes and then carefully just re-pour it. And maybe you didn't like the pan you used and you wanna try a different pan, do it. I actually have better results because believe it or not, the next time you melt your jelly plate, the, there's a little bit of moisture that will kind of come out of it just naturally um, with the chemistry. And I feel like sometimes the jelly, it just gets to be even a nicer, thicker consistency. Um, one thing to remember about this project is, you know, your hands are actually the press when we're doing this. So you're using your hands, your weight of your hands to press into the surface of the jelly. So you kind of do want it, you want it to have some give, but you also want it to be a little bit thick and sturdy. So those are just a couple tips to keep in mind. When your jelly plate is uh, ready to just relax and do its thing, I just use regular wax paper to cover it and keep it from getting dust. And, you know, just kind of let it sit. Tear a big enough piece and just leave it alone. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun and uh, I look forward to seeing you in my future workshop. And uh, write in if you have any questions and we'll hopefully get them answered before we get started. So thank you and uh, I 